Thank you, Bob. Good morning. Not long after moving to Chicago, I was invited to dinner at a home on the northwest side where I witnessed a young family's striking evening ritual. They had a young boy, about two years old, and like parents of toddlers everywhere, honored the customary bedtime demands. Good night, moon, the favorite stuffed bear, a kiss from his mother. Finally, the father gestured toward the boy's bedroom window and looked out over the street of tended lawns and handsome brick homes, it's the St. Ben's neighborhood, on which dusk had fallen. In the final familiar ritual of the day, the father asked his son, and who turns the street lights on in Chicago? And the little boy answered as he had been taught, Mayor Byrne turns the street lights on in Chicago. It was one of my earliest lessons in the omnipotent and almost mythological stature of the city's highest office, and one I recalled on the day last year when Mayor Daley announced he wasn't seeking re-election. When I shared the news that evening with my teenage daughter, she looked at me with utter incredulity and asked, but what will we do? <laughs> In what city does the identity of the citizenry seem more tightly entwined with its chief executive? That is now compounded by tens of thousands of Chicagoans, everyone under the age of 22, who have never walked a city street, attended a public school, ridden a bus, played in a park, or checked out a book from a library not governed by Mayor Richard M. Daley. Late last year, he surpassed his father to become the longest serving mayor in the city history, an almost unfathomable feat in light of waning fealty for incumbents everywhere. Urban historians will find rich work in the examination of Mayor Daley's reign and the story of Chicago's explosive trajectory, an especially astonishing performance in contrast to the withering fortunes of comparable industrial giants. Books are waiting to be written, perhaps by young scholars sitting this morning in classrooms at the University of Chicago, while journalists nationwide write the early drafts of history. Last spring, in its exhaustive profile of Mayor Daley, The New Yorker quoted former Philadelphia mayor and Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell as saying, he's the best mayor in the history of the country. What is indisputable is the mayor's stubborn love for Chicago and an almost preternatural mastery of its every virtue, flaw, and intersection. He asked me once why I thought a certain retailer had not expanded to Hyde Park. I wondered too, I said, since they didn't have a storefront south of North Avenue. He looked at me with a sort of bemused pity before reciting the location of each store in the chain, including the one 10 blocks south of North Avenue, a kind of human Google Maps for the city. <clears throat> This precision is true for his schoolhouses, police stations, firehouses, library branches, parish boundaries, ward offices, and more. In fact, in my experience, the only addresses that occasionally elude him are those of the city's daily newspapers, <clears throat> a surprising lapse for someone otherwise so skilled. Not long ago, President Zimmer and I were scheduled to meet with the mayor to update him on a university initiative. The lines were long that day on the fifth floor at City Hall, and his assistant warned us we had 15 minutes. It was a futile admonition. We left his office one hour and 45 minutes later, having sat through a master class in urban planning. Plans for introducing high-speed rail to Chicago, constructing a technology park in Chicago, expanding charter schools in Chicago, and moving ahead on plans for Washington Park in spite of the Olympics loss. Sounds to me like about four more years of work, I said. <clears throat> he demurred. As we prepare for the significant transition in leadership and set aside a day to grapple with the city's greatest challenges and opportunities, we felt it important, again, <clears throat> to hear from Mayor Daley and are pleased to have him with us this morning. But first, I do want to recognize another very important guest, and that is Maggie Daley, the mayor's wife. It is tempting to describe people who have cheerfully played a role not of their direct choosing as long-suffering. But in fact, Mrs. Daley has seemed anything but. 
her joyful passion for the arts and her commitment to Chicago's children has animated her time as Chicago's First Lady. Moreover, she has led with grace, humility, compassion, and kindness, and the city is very grateful for her many gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please now join me in welcoming Mrs. Daly's husband, the Honorable, the Honorable Richard M. Daly.